Hey guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to look at uh, expressions containing several radical terms. So it's more like combining like terms with uh, radicals, uh, which you'll see in the lesson. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So adding and subtracting radical expressions, really just looking at that radical, right? Like, um, like this one right here. Okay. Um, here's the thing is, is, if you saw that as 4x plus 3x, you feel really good about it, okay? Because you've done that before and you've done a lot of it. However, now instead of an x, we've got a square root of 5. We're going to combine these pretty much the exact same way. So 4 root 5s and 3 root 5s would give us 7 root 5s. And that would be our answer. Now it is possible in some cases we have to force the root to be the same so that we can combine them. And if, uh, if they're not, then we just can't. We can't combine them. So if, if, if this example, maybe in the front here, had plus, um, I don't know, 8 square root of 3, I wouldn't have been able to combine that 8 square root of 3 with the other stuff. And in that case, we would have treated it as 8y instead of an x value. All right, so just identifying like terms like we're used to, I've got root 6s and I've got root 2s, okay? I'm going to focus first on my root 6s just because it's in the front. That's the only reason. Uh, the values of these don't matter. So I got this negative 4 root 6 and this negative 3 root 6, which would combine into negative 7 root 6s. But then I've got these root 2s. I've got 7 root 2s and 2 more root 2s would combine into a positive 9 root 2s. Done. <clears throat> Alright, now we, you know, that one felt good, but now we got this one that we must make the roots the same. Really what that means is to simplify them, okay? Because if they do simplify um, and they're not the same, then we probably weren't able to um, Combine them anyways, okay? So we'll just uh, simplify them completely. So like this 112, for example, and 28. I'm, I'm kind of looking for common factors here. And on 28, maybe we could look at 7 and 4. And yeah, I am kind of cheating on that, okay? And then 112, I could look at 7 and, I don't know, 16. So again, I'm doing that on purpose because... 16 and 4 are both perfect squares. So, I mean, if we wanted to kind of do what we did last time by finding pairs, we could. But I can square root them at this point, which leaves me with that negative 10 in front. I'm just looking at that negative 10 square root of 112x. <coughs> and then I would multiply it by the square root of 16, which is 4. And then anything else that was not a perfect square is left over, right? Which would have been the 7 and the x. And I'll say this, right, the 16, the square root of 16. Because the 16 was in the square root, became that 4 right there in the front. Now that just simplifies negative 10 square root of 112x. And yes, this is minus. And we got a 9 in front. And I'm going to take that square root of 4, because it's a perfect square, and multiply it by the 9, or negative 9. Square root of 4 is 2. And now I've got the square root of whatever was left, the 7, and the x. And yes, now we have two square roots that are the same. i got the square root of 7x for both terms. So uh, I guess I should multiply those, right? Negative 10 and 4 is negative 40. Negative 9 and 2 is negative 18. And we got the square root of 7x. And now I'm going to combine the two like terms. Right, my uh, square root of 7x's. And if I took negative 40 of them and combined them with another negative 18 of them, I'd get negative 58. That's about as far as I can simplify that. More square roots, and yeah, I, I assume in the future here we'll see some not square roots. Um... Well, these look pretty close, right? The problem is, uh, I mean, we could maybe simplify it down and see if we can find 
common values, but uh, I'm going to kind of work this one the same way I did that last one. So, for example, the 18, I want, a fact, I want to find a factor of 18 that's a perfect square, like 9. 9 times 2 is 18. And then 8, that'd be 4 times 2, and 4 is the perfect square right there. Uh, but not only with the numbers on this one, but I should look at the, well, the x's in this case. So x cubed would split up into x squared times x. Well, that means this x cubed would also split up into x squared times x. Now, the reason I'm showing that is because there's enough x, x's inside the square root, as you can see here, to pull one out. Okay. So both of those have, I guess, that leading factor, negative 8 and 10. We'll do this one at a time, which maybe I should have done in the first place. But the 9, right, I can square root that because it's a perfect square. And I would multiply that square root by the negative 8. So that's my 3. And then I got my x squared. If I took the square root of that, then I would have x. And then what do I got left over in my square root? I got the 2, the red 2 there, and then the purple x. That's a positive 10. Same thing on this one. My 4 was my perfect square, so when I square root it, I'll multiply it by the 10. And then my x squared, when I square root that, I'll multiply that by the 10 and 2. So times the x. And we'll multiply this by the square root of whatever's left, the 2 and the x. And they're, they're the same square roots now, okay? But again, we should multiply before we start adding those together. So I'm going to combine negative uh, 8 with my 3x's. That would give me negative 24x's. Square root of 2x. Yeah, then we got 10 times the 2x, which is 20x's, with the square root of 2x. <clears throat> and when I combine these for my square root of 2x's, uh, I got negative 24x's of them and 20x's of them. So that would combine to be negative 4 x's of my square root of two x's. That's it. Uh, this may be more information than we need. Uh, all we're saying, and we've kind of seen the slide already before, okay, is when we're multiplying two binomials, we're going to use distribution, not FOIL, because when we start multiplying by <coughs> trinomials, that has to go away anyways. Uh, so we're going to multiply, right, I guess we could see that here, 4 times the x plus 1 right there, and then 3 times the x plus 1. Just, just sometimes these are going to have now, from now on, the square root stuff. So on this one, distribution, same as usual. I'm going to take my 3 root 7 and multiply it by that parentheses. And then I'm going to multiply my negative 4 root 5 by the <coughs> same parentheses here, right? Well, then we're going to distribute these into their separate parentheses. Yeah, you could have done that to begin with, which is what FOIL really is. Uh, let's look at this one at a time, though. So I've got 3 root 7 times 5 root 7. And before I look at the other distribution, which I know I have to do, and I need to remember that, um, let's just simplify this expression, all right? So I can really make this 3 times 5 times the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which would be 15 square root of, well, right, we can make that one square root of 7 and 7. So that's 15 times the square root of 49, which is a perfect square, so it's really 15 times 7, which is 105. Well, we've got to distribute the 3 square root of 7 to the square root of 5 as well. And it won't come out as pretty as that last one. Uh, but it will be shorter, and that's kind of nice. So we're going to add this to 3. And i got my two square roots, so I'm going to combine those, 7 times 5. So it's really plus 3 times the square root of 35. All right, with that, I would kind of assume, just based on the way most problems work, for these types of problems, is that we'll end up seeing another square root of 35 to combine with. Uh, but we'll find out for sure. So I'm going to 
distribute my negative 4 root 5 into the parentheses here, just the same way that I did right there, right? So it's negative 4 square root of 5 times 5 square root of 7. Again, I'll just rearrange these. 4 times 5 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 7. Combine my um, square roots there, I guess, and my numbers. 4 times 5 is 20. Square root of 5 times 7. So that's minus 20 square root of 35. And that's what I get um, from that term. All right, and then this last one, uh, negative 4 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. And if I combine that, I've got 4 square root of 5 times 5. So minus 4 times the square root of 25. Not everyone needs this step, right? Because you knew that 2 5s would have given us perfect square. So it's really 4 times 5. So it's really minus 20. So this is our new expression. It's not simplified completely yet, right? Because I do see some like terms that I can combine now. For example, just the constants. I've got 105 and negative 20. And when I combine those, looks like I get positive 85. And then I've got my root 35s. I got three of them and then negative 20 of them, which when I combine, I get negative 17 of them. And uh, that's, that's pretty good right there. Uh, if for some reason you had these written um, backwards, that's fine, right? You know, something like that. Conjug conjugates are great because what we're really trying to get from conjugates, right, because well, as you guys have seen, at least in this section, is we're dealing mostly with square roots. So a conjugate is helpful because of the difference of squares, right? So if we look back at the difference of squares, um, the factored form of the difference of squares, it does give us conjugates, all right? Now notice with the conjugates, it's not like it changes, um, I guess, the sign for the leading value, the A value. All it did was it changed the operation between the two. I guess from minus to minus and plus, okay? Now here's the nice thing about this is when we use conjugates, and this is for rationalizing denominators, by the way, which we've seen, but only with one term, so they were monomials, is when we get square roots in there, like let's say that B right there was the square root of, uh, what the heck, 7, and then this B was the square root of 7, then this would turn out to be the square root of 7, squared, which really is just 7, okay? And that rationalizes the denominator because we've gotten rid of all the square roots in the denominator. You know, if, let's say A was 1, so it would be 1 minus 7, then 1 plus the square root of 7, so it would be 1 squared minus the square root of 7, and then we would get negative 6 out of that. You know, it shows right here with this stuff, right? So A now is the square root of A, b is the square root of b, so this would be the square root of a squared minus the square root of b squared, which is just a minus b. Rationalize the denominator. That's all we got to do on this one. That's nice. It would have been great if that square root of 6 was something like the square root of 4, though, because then it would just be a square root of, well, just 2, right? Well, we need conjugates then. And right now I'm looking at that 4 plus the square root of 6, and the conjugate of it would be 4, and I've got the square root of 6, right? Again, the objective here is to get the difference of square stuff. So instead of that being plus, I'm going to make it minus. All right? But it has to be a factor of 1. So if I do it to the denominator, I've got to do it to the numerator as well. So I'm going to multiply that by... 4 minus the square root of 6 as well. Well, now we're just multiplying. Well, there's a lot of multiplication. <coughs> I'm going to show all the work on this one, though, just so we can kind of see what the heck is going on. So I would distribute the 4. I'm going to start with the denominator, which is kind of unusual, right? I'm going to start with the 4s. So that would be 4 times 4 minus the square root of 6. And then I've got the square root of 6 
distributed as well. So that's a positive square root of 6 distributed into 4 minus the square root of 6. Uh, again, I may just skip some of the steps on this, okay? So distribution in there, we've got to uh, distribute the 4 into both terms. 16 minus 4 square root of 6. Square root of 6 distributed plus, I'll just switch that around, 4 times the square root of 6 minus the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is 6. Well, this was always the nice thing about the difference of squares is the two middle terms cancel each other out. Right, I had two square roots of sixes, but one was negative four and one was positive four. So those are going to cancel out. And I end up with six and then this negative six over here, which combined to be uh, ten. That would be my new denominator, by the way. Ten. But that's just the denominator, right? So we still have to work with the numerator. All right, distribution, seven times four minus the square root of six. And then distribute the square root of 6. Well, that's parentheses right there. And that's a positive square root of 6 times 4 minus the square root of 6. Now, we wouldn't expect the difference of squares here, which we won't, uh, because they're different terms, right? They're not conjugates. And now we'll distribute the 7 and the square root of 6. So 7 times 4 is 28 minus 7 times the square root of 6. 7 times the square root of 6, plus uh, we'll make that 4 times the square root of 6, and minus square root of 6 times the square root of 6, is the square root of 36, which is 6. Now I'll just combine uh, like terms in the new, because this is still the numerator, right? And I've got, well, the 28 and the negative 6, which would be 22, and then I got my square root of 6's. I got negative 7 of them and then 4 of them, which is negative 3 of them. Now, again, it doesn't matter which way you write that. You can write the square root in front if you want. But I'll just write it the way that I have it. 22 minus 3 times the square root of 6. I gave myself a little bit more space than I needed, but that's okay. All right, we'll rationalize this one as well. So same idea on this one, right, we're going to look at this like a binomial. And we need to multiply it by its conjugate. So we got negative 1 and the square root of x, uh, but we're going to change that to plus instead. Now instead of showing the distribution on this, because we've seen it, um, I'm just going to use the difference of squares on these now. But if I do multiply it in the denominator, I must multiply it in the numerator as well. So since these are conjugates, and, well, actually, right, I guess I could start with the numerator on this one. Do you guys care? <coughs> okay. Well, uh, we could distribute that 1 into the parentheses. 1 times anything is not going to change it, so I just end up with negative 1 plus the square root of x. That's nice. Uh, but down here, we've got conjugates, so I'm really going to take negative 1 and square it, and then we're going to subtract the square root of x and square that as well. Okay? And negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And the square root of x squared is x. So I really just end up with 1 minus x. And that's my denominator. And, well, comparatively, that was kind of short, right? But we did use the difference of squares on it. All right, so showing the distribution on that, Right, I've got the negative 1 times that set of parentheses. And then I'm going to distribute this negative square root of x into the same parentheses. And now we'll actually distribute those values into separate parentheses. So I get 1 minus the square root of x. You could say negative 1 square root of x. And then I've got negative square root of x times negative 1, which is positive 1 square root of x. And then negative square root of x times the square root of x, which is just the negative x. And once again, those two middle terms are going to cancel each other out. And all we're left with is the 1 minus the x. All right, reducing the index on the radical, uh, we want to do this uniformly. And to do that, mm, 
I'm going to use the rational exponents to do this one, okay? Uh, but before I do that, I do want to acknowledge that 9 is the same as 3 squared, which, you know, kind of gives me a new expression here. Well, that's going to allow me to change that uh, square root of 10 into now a rational exponent, but I'm going to need parentheses for that, right? And now this is to the power of 1 tenth. Now, the only reason I, I like to show it like this is because it, it uses exponent rules that we're already familiar with, right? I'm going to take that 1 tenth and multiply it by all the exponents on the inside of that parentheses. And, uh, well, let's see what happens from that. Uh, really, all we're going to do is take those and divide each of them by 10. And you didn't need the rational exponent to do that. Some of you guys would have went straight from the 10th root into this expression. And that would be fine, okay? But what we need to do now, just to fully simplify this, is to actually simplify the fractions, right? So I've still got my bases. But simplifying those fractions, I would get 1 fifth for my exponent of 3. X also, that'd be one fifth. Y is two fifths, and Z is also one fifth. So at this point, you could factor out a fifth from each of those exponents, right? But since we already know that those fifths are going to give us a root value, I'm going to change that into the fifth root for each of them, each of the bases. Now that fifth root came from the denominators all being the same. So I've just got to acknowledge each of the numerators for all four of those um, factors right there. So 3 to the 1th, x to the 1th, y squared, and z to the 1th. Yeah, we don't really need to show those 1s there either. Whatever you want. There we go. <clears throat> So this one's kind of related to the reduce, the um, index, kind of, okay? On this one, we're really just looking to combine like terms, which will require that denominators be the same. Some of you guys know why that is right now, but we'll find out, okay? Um, what I want to do is kind of do the same thing we did on that last one with changing the index stuff. So instead of the seventh root of a, b cubed, and I'm going to skip a step on this, I'm going to make it a to the 1 7th times b to the 3 7th. And then we got our 8th, so we have a to the 5 8th times b. Now this is 1 8th, right, because the exponent of b is 1. All right, so I'm going to just rearrange this so that the like terms are next to each other. Again, not everyone needs this step, but I like to show it. So we see that we got bases that are common here, and if we go back to exponent rules, when we multiply two bases that are the same, then we can add the exponents, right? So I have two bases, A and B. We'll start with A and just focus on it for now. And right now we've got 1 7th, and then we would be adding that 5 8 Now the problem here is we have a fraction, and I'm not using a calculator, uh, but... Since we're adding fractions, we do need common denominators. So, it would take the 1 7th and multiply the numerator and denominator by 8, which I guess is also our lowest common denominator, but I'm strategizing here. And then 5 8 times 7 over 7. So this ends up being 8 56 plus 35 56. And now we'll just combine those uh, in 56 so 8 plus 35 43 mm -hmm. and that's as far as I could simplify my base a but I do need to do the same for the B value right uh, same idea on this one looks like my lowest common denominator would be 56 so 8 over 8 times 3 sevenths and then uh, 1 8 times 7 over 7 and we'd get uh, 24 56 plus 7 56, which would give us 31 56. All right. Uh, well, this doesn't want the um, rational exponents. And we do have both of these in 56, 
for our exponents, which means we got the 56th root of A and B. We just need the num numerators from those 43 and 31. All right, we'll simplify these. Notice, I mean, the only difference here is that instead of multiplying those two is we're now dividing them. Uh, but I will change these first, just like we did in that last problem, into rational exponents. And right, there we go. And uh, we'll separate these again. So I've got my x's and my y's. And, um, well, we got division of here of the same basis so we can subtract the exponents. Now, some of you noticed we could simplify the two-eighths. Uh, but since we want this simplified with those radicals, we'll keep, the, uh, keep it as an eighth, just so when we find our common denominators, it's the same denominator in the exponent for the x and y bases. Well, we need to find common denominators for these. So, once again, we have base, uh, the denominators of 7 and 8. So our lowest common denominator will be 56. So now I've got my base x and base y, but uh, let's see what those fractions look like now. And now we'll just combine those fractions for the x's and y's. 48 minus 35, 13 56 and 24 minus 14, 10 56 Now again, you may be tempted to simplify 10 56, but we want it to be the same so that we can include this all in the same radical, right? So I got my radical. This is all in uh, 56, which is the common denominator for both the exponents in x and y. And I've got my bases, x and y, and I just need the numerators for those now, 13 and 10. Done.